Martini de Gloria's Layout Zone script adds the Layout Zone menu to the Edit menu in InDesign. And it provides you with two commands, Objects to InDesign Document and Link to InDesign Page to Objects. Now the script was actually launched early this month, if I'm correct from memory, at InDesignSecrets.com. And Adobe's own Tim Cole wrote several extensive posts on his Adobe blog providing installation instructions and very in-depth notes on all of the features that are uh, that, that basically exist in both of those two commands. Now if you go to About Layout Zone, you have some links to those websites so you can actually get the script. You can actually download it from InDesignSecrets.com and you've also got Martinez details there. Now I'm not going to to replicate what Tim and others have already mentioned, but what I wanted to do in this podcast is actually show you a quick example of how you could use this in a small newspaper workflow. And I'm talking about a workflow where um, there was no editorial integration with other applications such as, for instance, InCopy or, or, or other um, editorial workflows and systems that work with InDesign. So this is like a, net, a standalone InDesign solution. Now, what are some of the issues that we encounter? Well, first of all, normally what happens is an, an editor will actually design areas on a page. They will be zoning the layout, the layout and say, this is where this article is going to go. That's where that article is going to go. They have an idea where the ads go because they've communicated with the advertising coordinator so they know exactly how many ads have been sold for each page, what the size is, where they go. So they're literally breaking a page up into different zones, is a figure of speech. And, and then at some point, obviously, all the content needs to go into the pages. Now, what will happen is you will have editors who want, to, who want to edit their articles and write their stories on this page. You will have designers that will work on ads that want to put them all in this page. So you're like basically looking at having lots of people that want to have access to this page. But what's the big problem? Well, only one person can have access to this particular InDesign page at any one time. And this is where Layout Zone will help out a bit. Now, first of all here, let's look at this example here. Um, there is a, a position here left open for an ad, and it's just a text frame at the moment that has got the words Extreme Ad in there. Now, the ability of InDesign CS3 to place InDesign documents makes all of this work behind the scene. So let's say this ad needs to be set by someone else, either in-house or even external. What we'll do is we'll select this area, go to the Edit menu, Layout Zone, and we're going to convert this selected object, in this case, to an external InDesign document. So we're only going to save the selection. We're going to replace that text frame there with a link to an InDesign document. I don't have to worry about hanging as senders and descenders. Click OK and we'll save that into Extreme Ad. Into this folder here. Okay, as soon as I've done that, this is no longer a text frame, you can tell, because there's no imports and outports. And also here is your link to the external InDesign file. So now I'm just going to do a quick pretend here. So let me jump to this extreme ad and I'm going to cheat big time because obviously you can probably understand that I'm not going to set this ad. I'm just going to copy all of the content from one that I've already created. Now as you notice it's brought this across as that original text frame and also I had actually generate, uh, generated a separate layer just for ads in that newspaper.ind file and so it's actually brought that layer across. So I'm going to get rid of this and replace all of the stuff that I've just copied in the same spot that it came from. So I'm going to save that and close that. And if we now turn back to the links panel in this newspaper, you will notice that we've updated. We need to update this link because it's been modified. So we'll update that link and there is your ad. In the same manner, you can work on an entire article, so you might have reserved some space for your heading, for your main story, for a graphic, and so on. So again, you do the same thing. You convert the selected objects, or multiple objects in this case, to the InDesign document. And you rinse and run. Just 
head to your back of your neck. And again, as you can see, that's created a link straight to the article. This means that the editor can now work on his own in his own file. So if we're going into this article folder, and I'm just going to open both, including the sheet where I finished the document already. Uh, let's just copy that text here. Don't need to go to the main document. We can start to edit this document and so on. So what I'll do to the quick cheat again so we've got that article finished there and again on the on the page itself it points out that this has been modified so again we'll update that modified link and there is that article now the other thing that might be needed occasionally is you might have requests where you've got some art on your page and this could be an ad that hasn't been converted to an external InDesign document but it consists of some logos of some um, some text and so on and someone else needs it for another publication, so they just want to have that as an individual InDesign document, not necessarily creating a link back from that InDesign document to this particular page. In that case, we will again convert the objects to an InDesign document, but this time around we will not be replacing the document objects with a link to that InDesign document. So if you untick the replace objects with document you will not get that link and the artwork on your page will just stay as it is. And I'll just save that wherever it doesn't really matter in this case. And as you can see that just stays as it is and you've got the InDesign document elsewhere. That reminds me a little bit of maybe providing someone with a snippet that they can use with the exception that this will actually provide them with a full InDesign document to the finished size of this ad. Now the the last thing that I'm thinking of that you might need to use this for, at some point all of the contents on your page and an editor might come up to you and say, look, um, there's just a few tiny little changes. Can I just sit with you and, and make those changes on the page? Now, at this stage, this particular article still points back to an external InDesign document. But if you want to start editing this on the page, you would need to do the reverse of what we've been doing up until now. So what we want to do in that case is we want to convert the links in design page back to objects inside this newspaper document. So again, what we're going to do here, we're going to create those objects, so all the text frames, the graphic frames and so on. Let's recreate those and just as the original. Click OK. And there's all your objects again. So we can now easily change a little bit of text, make changes to content and so on. So this is hopefully giving you a little bit of an idea of how you can use the layout zone script within your workflow. Go and have a download and have a bit of a play with it and see if it's useful for your company.